I must begin, dear friends, with a confession. I came into church last Wednesday knowing what the gospel reading was and knowing what I was going to say. I came in and sat down and picked up the little leaflet that I read from in the two minutes before church started, opened it, and discovered it was not the gospel that I thought it was. The one that I thought I was going to preach on was one I had heard in a podcast earlier in the week. Now I had two minutes. I could have chosen to say, well, I have nothing to say for my own fault. I could, in those two minutes, have, perhaps worse, come up with something random to say about that gospel in the moment. Instead, what I did was put a toupee on what I intended to say and make it sound like it went with the gospel for the day. And of your pity, don't tell me if it was too noticeable. I go to this length to make myself look like a fool to point out that that's kind of what's going on in the gospel this morning. Jesus and his listeners are speaking to each other, and his listeners are saying things to Jesus but not really wanting to hear what the answer is, because they know what the answer is supposed to be already. They're, asking, they're, they're like lawyers asking the question in court. You never ask a question in court you don't already know the answer to. The trouble is when Jesus then answers the question, they don't really hear what he's saying. On the other hand, Jesus does say exactly what he means to say. Another rule, apparently, from court testimony is you never say more than you have to to answer the question. Just answer the question and get out. So we have to assume that everything he's saying is somehow the actual answer to the question they have asked, even if it's not what they were expecting to hear. That's all very well when we think of this as something nice and polite and ancient that we read again periodically in church, but I think it applies to us too. When we ask God questions, when we ask Jesus the questions we want answered, and we receive answers, but they're not the answers we were looking for, or they're not in the form we were expecting them to come in. How often do we just put a toupee in what we thought the answer was going to be anyway and move on? And in the process, how often do we miss important things that God needs to tell us? In, in the continuing vein of confession, I will say I have complained periodically about passages in the Gospel of John that do seem to be pretty convoluted, that don't seem to be speaking to me in sort of soft and, and understandable terms. But hidden in there, if we will stick with it, if we will stick with Jesus as he is telling us these things, we will discover things that are important for you and for me. In reading it just now, I was really struck by this idea that somehow uh, the dead will be raised. And I think if we dig into that a little, Jesus wasn't talking just about the literal dead. He was talking about the spiritually dead. And if we're even just a little more honest, we will recognize that each one of us is spiritually dead at some point in our lives or perhaps in some aspect of our lives. But God desires even to resurrect that. That means something's going to change in you and me. And so now we really do need to be paying attention because he's talking about what's going to happen when that happens to you and to me right now in this life. Will we be raised to the resurrection of salvation or to the resurrection of condemnation? I think a lot of that depends on how we respond when God starts to do that to us. Whether we go with it or if, continue using my metaphor, we just put a toupee on it and set it aside. I think a lot rests with what that resurrection means for you and for me in this life. All the more reason why we should be listening carefully to what it is that Jesus says, recognizing that those words are for us and are about our life now, not simply about some future perfect time. Amen.